Now let's talk about some specialties exist in the One Identity Manager. Um, there are many more options in the API, please trust me, but what I like to show you here in that specific part of the video is some more often used features. I like to start with a way to get a specific value out of a not related table somewhere depending on a where clause. Therefore exists something we call try get single value and it works like follows. There is a where clause and that where clause identifies an object. For me, for example, I like to get back in this specific example, the domain name of a domain, which is related to the ADS container, which is related to the ADS account. To do so, I have to write a where clause somewhere into the system. This is my where clause. This is a absolutely standard where clause. If I copy that to SQL, it will work there as well. With the help of this where clause, I can then use the try get single value. It is of type string this time. And uh, to use it, I have to define the data table I like to look into, that is ADS domain. Then I have to identify the column I like to get back, which is the ident domain, that is the domain name. And last but not least, I have to define the where clause. Here it is, that is exactly the thing I defined on the upper. Last but not least, remember try always says the variable where I store the result to comes at the end, the string property value parameter will get the result. This is standard to get a single property out of a not related object on the basis of whatever elsewhere clause. Another thing that is often used is to get a configuration parameter back. Remember, configuration parameters are something defined in designer in the configuration parameter section. Here we are. And you can see there is an auto update parameter and a sub parameter that says service update type of type auto, whatever that is. But what you can see here as well is that any parameter comes with a full name. The full name is the complete reference to the parameter. And with the help of that value, I'm able to get the value of the parameter, in this case auto. To show you that, I do the following on the session. First, I define a text variable where the complete path is stored to. Here we are. Then I define a parameter variable where I get the value of the parameter stored to. And then with the help of session config, I use get config parameter with that reference to get the parameter value back. Easy to do. If I look onto my properties and my objects, I cannot only change properties and create and delete and update objects. I can as well step to the object properties and there on the object, I can call methods. Here they are. A very common method is for example, execute templates, which recalculates all the templates for that specific object where I execute that method. It's easy to do here in the object browser. I have only to press execute and I'm good. But what's to do if I like to do that in the API? To do that, I have to do the following. I step back into my Visual Studio and in Visual Studio on the object, for example, a dbad account object, I use the method call method. And then I specify the method I like to call, execute templates, the names I get from the object browser, for example. In seldom cases, the method, it's not only a method which works like a procedure, it is a function and that function returns something to me. And in these special circumstances, I can as well use the function call function, then the name of the method, but then I have to assign the result to a specific variable as you can see it here, because methods called by functions will return a specific value. If you ever have developed processes, you know that these processes could be called with the help of events. If I step to my Active Directory account again, you can see for Active Directory accounts exists a lot of events. Standard events are insert, update and delete. And then there are some more personally, that means manually defined events. And you know that these manually defined events could only be triggered if you use the API, another process or a schedule for. To show you how that works in the API, I step back into my Visual Studio. Here we are. And I have to know that events can only be called from a unit of work. So what I have to do, I have first to define a unit of work. Here we are. 
Then I have to define a collection, for example, my Active Directory account collection. And on the Active Directory account collection, I have to define the element, which is standard. We saw that many times before. And then for the unit of work, I can generate, for example, on the element, a specific deactivate event. And this deactivate event will then maybe trigger processes. That's the way to do that. It's a little bit more complicated than the other things, but it works properly.